<sighs> I love these lazy salads. You're not supposed to be filming a video today. So this is the troll that comes in the Battle of Ozgiliath starter set and I start off by giving them an overspray of grey and then I slap some Agrax Airshade onto his skin. Uh, seems out of place but I saw someone doing this in a video and it really works. Like I was quite shocked myself so I got up early this morning to paint the back of him as you can see just to see how good it actually came out um, to give me time to go and potentially respray him and start again. But not really surprised at how good Agrax Airshade over a grey can of spray paint works for skin. Next up we're going to use Hardened Leather from the Armoury Painter Speed Paint range. And we're going to use that to paint all of the sort of cloth under his armour plate. So he's got like um, some fabric or cloth or in this case I'm painting it to be leather which is under the armour. So that the metal doesn't irritate his poor, soft, sensitive troll skin. So make sure you get all of that covered. There are some straps that run across it. We're going to paint those in a different colour, so watch, don't go over those. Once that's complete, we're going to paint his loincloth. Now I'm using Blood Red from the Army Painter Speed Paint range. I don't think it's available anymore, I think they discontinued it, and they've got a different colour of red. But I still have a bottle so I'm going to use it. I'm using red to tie in this troll with the rest of my army. Um, Moran and Orcs, all of mine have red clothing underneath their armour. So this will help with the sort of unit cohesion. Make them look like they belong together. Once we've done that, it's those straps we talked about earlier. And we're going to use black Templar contrast paint from Citadel to do that. Now there's a lot of straps on this guy. He's got a couple on each arm holding his armour in place. Uh, a few on the shield as well, one on his back and his belt across the waist. We're also going to use this black templar to paint his toenails and fingernails because we want them to look really, really dirty. Next up we're going to use Saigor Brown which is also from the Citadel contrast range and we're going to use that for some of the, the raised areas of skin. Um, I don't know if they're scales or spots or whatever uh, but there's a few areas of your skin that look different from the rest of them we're going to use Saigor Brown to colour them and give them a bit of texture and a bit of depth we're also going to just splotch some areas over the skin with it as well just to break up the monotony of colour now it's time to paint the metal and there is a lot of it so we're going to use lead belcher to base coat of the armour plates both on each chest um, and his arms and shoulders, so his pauldrons and his gauntlets. We're going to base coat everything with lead belcher. Now, because so much of the model is covered in these metal plates, we really want to pay attention to what we're doing here. Make sure we get a nice clean coat and don't miss anything out. Now, the shield has a couple of panels on it, and I decided to paint those with Rune Fang steel um, just to give it a different colour to lead belcher and make it look like the shield has been battered together from spare bits of metal. I mean, as a troll, troll sized gear probably isn't very common. So yeah, they've probably hammered this together from some scrap metal they found lying about. Now it was about this time that I had an idea. An idea that was so smart my head would explode if I even began to know what I was talking about. Now the horns on the Mordor Troll's helmet they rang a bell. I looked at those and I thought, I've seen something like that before. That looks like a certain god of mischief to me. So I decided to paint them green and gold. So using Caliban Green, I went about painting my Loki style helmet on my troll. Once we've done with the green, it's then Retributor Armour to colour the horns and faceplate of the helmet. And I don't want to blow my own trumpet. But I think this looks brilliant. Now we just use a little touch of the lupus pink contrast paint from Citadel and we use that inside the troll's mouth to give them uh, just a little bit of colour in there as well and break up the face a bit. Now it's time to wash the models. We're going to start with some Nuln oil which we'll paint on all the metallics. 
not the helmet, not the gold anyway. So we'll cover this on the shield, the armour plates on his chest, shoulder and arms. Then we're going to use right on the flesh shed. Start here in the face just to give the face a little bit of depth. That should pick up some of the details. We're also going to wash over all of the skin, including the, the bits we've painted earlier, the scales. This should just give the skin a little bit more warmth and depth. Like the um, the Agrax Earthshade is good, but this will really bring up a notch. Also should hopefully tie in all of the different skin tones, so it looks like they sort of blend and they're not very uh, contrasting. So we'll use it for all of that. And we're also going to use it for the gold on the helmet. Rickland Flesh Shade and Gold are a fantastic mix. Now it's just a matter of waiting for the model to dry. Whilst you're waiting, why not hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all of my future content. Now that the model is dried, we're going to highlight it. The first colour we're going to use to highlight is Stormhost Silver, which we'll use in all of the metallics. So, the way we do this is we look for any edges and edge highlight them with the Stormhost Silver, as well as the bolts that are coming out of the armour, the ones that are holding it in place. We're going to give those a little bit of Stormhost Silver just to make them shine and stick out. Now to highlight the gold on the helmet, we're going to use Liberator Gold. So once again, just pick out the bolts and then edge highlight the horns and the faceplate just to give it a little bit of a shine. Next up, we're going to highlight the troll's teeth and to do that, we're going to use just a little bit of Ushab de Bone right on the edges. Now we're going to continue with the Ushab de Bone, but now we're going to use it as a dry brush. We're going to dry brush the scales on his back and his legs, hopefully adding some texture, some highlight, some definition to those raised areas. Now continuing with the dry brush, we're going to dry brush some riser rust onto the shield and some patches just to make it look a little bit more rusty and weathered. And there we have it, the god of mischief returned in troll form to help storm the gates of Minas Tirith and end the rule of man. And it didn't take a long time to paint either. I think in total I spent about an hour painting. I think I spent more time waiting for paints to dry than anything else. And if you followed my recent YouTube short on how I magnetised the troll's arms, you can swap that spear out for a sword, a club or even a hammer. Although it definitely raises the question of, who did they steal that hammer from? <laughs>